Hey, Glenn here from Me Have the World's Leading Physical Therapy Alternative, where we educate and empower you to take control of your recovery. In this video, I'm going to share with you who are likely to do best with a rotator cuff repair and how often they will re tear. As always, this information is meant for education and demonstration purposes only. With that out of the way, let's get into it. If you've been diagnosed with a rotator cuff tear, the next decision is on whether to have it repaired or not. It's not an easy decision. The recovery is long, about four months, and it can be pretty uncomfortable, especially for the first month or so. We wanted to share with you what people tend to do well with the repair of a relevant rotator cuff tear. If you're not sure what I mean by relevant at this point, you should probably subscribe to our channel and watch the video that I will tag right here and also in the description below. All right, so here are people who should consider having a rotator cuff repair. You had a severe and sudden onset of pain and disability. The sudden onset of symptoms with the loss of function increases the likelihood that a rotator cuff tear is the actual cause of your pain, and it usually comes from a specific incident like a fall. You've had a failure of conservative care, either rest or rehab. More often than not, time or a little rehab will fix most things. But if you've not had any improvement in six to eight weeks, the likelihood of a successful response to conservative care is low. Your pain levels are very high at night. High level night pain indicates that even though you are likely limiting use of or protecting your arm, the activities of the day are still too much for it. Also at night, most people are resting their arm, so one would expect the pain levels to be lower. You are younger. The younger you are, the better the outcomes from surgery, and the lower the likelihood of a re-tear. You have general good health. A person's general health has been shown to be one of the most important factors in the ability of tissue to tolerate stresses and recover from injury. It is why treating the whole person is important. You have a physically demanding job or sport. People that expose their shoulders to high loads likely will need to have a fully intact rotator cuff to deal with the stresses they normally handle. You are educated on the risks of surgery and the recovery process. The recovery from a rotator cuff surgery is long and uncomfortable. Many people don't realize just how much work it takes to recover from it. It's important that you have a realistic expectation of the process. A common fear after having a rotator cuff repair is that it will re-tear and it's a valid concern. The rates of re-tears vary considerably from study to study. One study reported re-tear rates in 50-year-olds within one year of around 25% for small tears and 55% for massive tears. And in 80-year-olds, those percentages changed to 55% and 80% having a re-tear within one year. Other studies have shown lower but still significant re-tear rates by the end of post-surgical year one. What we do know is that as a person age increases and as the size of the initial tear increases, the rate of re-tear also increases. A reasonable estimate of a re-tear would be for every 10 years over the age of 40, add 2% for small tears, 7% for medium tears, and 10% for larger tears. For example, the likelihood of a re-tear of a medium-sized rotator cuff would be 7% for a person in their 40s, 14% for a person in their 50s, 21% for a person in their 60s, 28% for a person in their 70s, and 35% for a person in their 80s. Keep in mind that these are just approximations to give a ballpark assessment you can do yourself, and there are a number of factors that can raise and lower these percentages. Those numbers could seem quite depressing considering there's a chance of one in three to one in 10 that you're gonna re-tear your rotator cuff. However, despite developing a re-tear, pain levels, functional scores, and activity levels continue to remain high after rotator cuff repair. The fact that despite a retear, people continue to have improvement is an interesting finding. If you've watched our other video regarding the presence of rotator cuff tears in people without any issues, this finding helps reinforce the statement that having shoulder pain and having a rotator cuff tear does not always mean that they are related. What this study could indicate is that with the initial appropriate activity modification, time, and then the gradual reintroduction of a progressive load or stress to a painful shoulder could be all that's needed to help decrease pain and increase function, regardless of the presence of a tear. 
Maybe it is the strengthening that occurs after surgery and therapy that helps keep those pain levels low and activity levels high despite the presence of still having that tear. There are a lot of things to think about when you're considering getting a rotator cuff repair and we hope that this video has provided some insight for you. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one.